Well, we're getting down to it now. Just 56 days from Election Day, and all week we're going to be revealing results from our exclusive WRAL news poll. Today, we are centering on the presidential race. Survey USA conducted this poll, and it finds that Vice President Kamala Harris is leading former President Donald Trump by three points here in North Carolina on the eve of the first debate between the two candidates. Ken Alper is here. He uh, he runs Survey USA, joining us now to talk about really what goes into conducting these polls. Good evening, Ken. We appreciate you being with us. Absolutely. Let's talk about the process because people, of course, can make, they understand the results, but it's really important, I think, to uh, explain the methodology, the, the how you got these numbers. Absolutely. So for state polls like this, we conduct the research online using members of internet research panels, folks who've agreed in advance to take surveys. So, you know, 20 years ago, we were able to do this entirely on the telephone and enough people were still using lab lines and still answering the phone uh, and participating. And as you know, that's not the case anymore. So we still use the phone when we need to for smaller projects usually. Uh, but for state level work, that's it's a lot more expensive to use the phone and it's no more accurate, no less accurate. So these folks are basically waiting to take surveys and uh, they get notified, they get sent into our poll questions, and then we apply some census data to those results to make sure that they end up being properly representative of the state. What we don't do is we don't try to apply our own feelings about who's going to vote and not vote. You know, there've been elections in the past where some polls have said, yeah, you know, we're not gonna include anyone who didn't vote in at least two out of the last three elections, that sort of thing. Or they've made assumptions that, you know, because the percentage of young voters was X in the previous election or because Y percent of the voters in the last election were African-American, that the next election is gonna look the same or it's gonna look different. We don't make those assumptions. We make sure that our data reflects what the census says the overall population of the state is, and then we let people tell us whether or not they're voters. We always see the margin of error. When we see a scientific poll, there has to be that, that give or take one way or another. Talk a little bit about the, the fail-safes, the things do, that can ensure that these results are as accurate as possible when the people at home are, are trying to interpret what they might mean. Sure. So, you know, in, in the industry, we tend to talk not so much about margin of error, but we use a term called total survey error because we're not just looking at the most technical things. We're also looking at the most basic things, which for us, a lot of it comes down to what we've done since the beginning when we first started doing this in the 1992 election. And that's writing really clear questions that aren't biased in any direction, that don't slant the results either intentionally, which would be awful, or almost as bad accidentally slamming the results one way or the other. We want to make sure that our polling is as accurate as it can be because our, our whole job is to get the election right. If we get it right, we do well as a company. If we get it wrong, we don't get to work a lot more elections. You know, another part of that is working carefully with our vendors to make sure the people who are taking part in the online surveys are real and that they're reliable respondents, that they're not what we call professional survey takers, people who take, you know, too many polls all the time and aren't answering them seriously. Some of that is coming from the vendor. A lot of it, though, is our own internal checks where we're looking at everything from how long a given respondent takes to complete the survey, to making sure they're not giving us inconsistent answers, to asking them open-ended questions so that we're making them type something in their own words which really gives us some insight to make sure that we're, you know, looking at real people here and that we're getting data that we can feel confident and that you and your viewers can feel confident in. Polls are, are a very popular thing, uh, getting a pulse of what is happening, not just for the candidates and for the various parties, but for the voters at home. That said, because of their popularity, we see so many polls out there nowadays, and the scientific polls end up getting mixed in with the non-scientific polls in the eyes of some of the viewers at home. But I do want to specify the work that you're doing, and historically, you've seen a lot of accuracy with the polling compared to what the final result ends up being. That's right. We have a great track record. We're A rated or A plus rated, depending on who's doing the rating, and we are solidly up there. We've also done more public opinion polls on elections than I think anyone else in the database because we've been doing this, like I said, since the 1992 election. All right, Ken, thank you so much. We appreciate you being with us, uh, explaining these very important results to our viewers at home. Uh, thanks for your time tonight. Absolutely.